Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to get started with your color wheel and how to paint a section with one primary color. The first thing you want to do is label all your sections. I labeled my sections and I wrote with pencil and I wrote pretty dark because I wanted you to be able to see it, but on yours write really, really lightly because you want to erase it afterwards. Here's what you do. You write each of the primaries in one section and then you skip three and then you write the next primary like this. Yellow, one, two, three, red, one, two, three, blue. After that, in the center section between each of the primaries, you write the secondary that you mix when you mix the two primaries, like mixing yellow and red, you get orange. Mixing red and blue, you're going to get purple. And then mixing blue and yellow, you'll get green. So the secondaries go in the section right in the middle between the two primaries. In between the primary and the secondary, you're going to write the name of the tertiaries. Between yellow and orange, it's yellow orange. Between orange and red, red orange, red and purple, red violet, and so on. The next thing that's really important to do is decide where you want to place your hues, your light tints, your tints, your light tones, the tones, and the shades. Uh, you may want to check our vocabulary uh, list and make sure you know what those terms mean. Okay, so you have six different colors. What I did was I thought after I made this mandala, I looked at it and I thought, saw this funny alien head and I see these two like eyes here and then that's like the shape of the head and I don't know, maybe that's its hat or a crown or something. But the reason I'm telling you that is I decided I wanted the eyes dark. Uh, so I'm going to make those the shade, the shade's the darkest. And you may want to think about what you want to be the, what, what color you want the lightest. I thought it would, look, it would look really nice if this center was very light. So I'm going to make all those the light tints. Uh, the other ones were a little bit random. My decisions were a little random. So here we go. Uh, I've got all my paint on my palette uh, and if you don't have paper palettes at home you could use styrofoam plates or plastic plates or wax paper. All of those work well. If you use a regular paper plate what's going to happen is that will absorb the paint into it. I decided that I was going to get some Utrecht Artist Acrylic Colors uh, because they have a little more pigment in them than the student grade and plus, they're on sale. Utrecht paints are available uh, on the Blick website. Okay, so here it goes. I'm just going to start right in there with the red and uh, grab some red paint. I'm using a uh, filbert brush and I'm going to consult with this and it looks like that shape will be red. This is my red section and so this will be the hue. It'll be the pure hue. And whenever I try to get a good clean line, I do uh, anchor the side of my hand right on the paper. Okay, and I want to get this as flat as it can be, but I also know that if the edge is a little bit rough, that I can fix it later. Now, as I'm working on this, I remembered that I forgot to show you something important. And I'm going to finish half of this little section right now, and then I'm going to show you that. All right, let me get in here, finish that up, come around there. And pull that in there. Now that hue is going to continue around here, but here's what I forgot to show you. What you're going to want to do is, before you work on each section, you're going to want to tape the edges off. 
I have this painter's tape, which is great, and I really don't have to rub this on my clothing, but if you just have masking tape at home, what you want to do, as you probably remember, is rub it on your clothing, get some of the uh, tackiness off of it, and so when you lift it up, it doesn't pull off the top surface of the paper, and then just pull that down like that. And then you'll have nice smooth edges between each of the sections. All right, and rub that on my clothes. Put that down, then I'll finish up my red. Okay, got that down there. And when I rub this down, I, I, I really particularly push down the uh, side that's right on the edge of that section right there. So getting back to work, get some of that red, finish that up, and consulting with that, this whole thing is red here. And see, the nice thing is I don't have to worry about keeping that other edge nice and neat. So I like to work in a place where I can kind of walk around uh, where I'm painting. And uh, if I wasn't making this video, I might just sit in one place and maybe move the uh, move my Bristol board around so I can access some of those edges a little bit better. I'm thinking my head's probably blocking this video right now, but I will move it really soon. Okay, I'm back. Sometimes, you know, with this paint, if it doesn't have white added to it, it can be a bit transparent. And if it is a bit transparent, you're going to want to go over with the second coat. Sometimes I'll put a second coat on pretty quick while the first coat's still pretty wet. And other times I might just wait until the whole thing dries and then just go over it again with another coat so it's nice and flat. Okay, so that's good enough. All right, now for the light tint. So when you're working on your first section, that's when you're really, really figuring out how light you're going to make your light tints. And I want my light tints to be quite light. Every light tint on each of the 12 sections will have the same value. So whatever you start off with, whatever value you start off with in your first section, that's the value that you want to try to keep throughout the entire uh, mandala. So that's a beautiful shade of clear light pink. By the way, I am using Quindacridone Red. Quindacridone Red, I feel like I'm making commercials. Quindacridone Red uh, is my favorite red, personally. Uh, it's a synthetic red and uh, it makes beautiful cold pinks. If you have a cadmium red, and uh, my phone's ringing, but I'm going to ignore it right now. So if you have a cadmium red, really hard to ignore that. If you have a cadmium red, it's going to be a lot more peachy color. And here I'm painting that this beautiful shade of pale pink right in there. All right, so I'm getting up to this edge here, that corner, and I, you can probably see that I have my little pinky kind of anchored down here, and that helps to stabilize my hand uh, so I can get a nice, good, clear edge. Now to get this, I'm going to move around a little bit, pull the paint this way, and now I'm just going to fix that edge like this, and then flatten that up a little bit. Okay, so that was my light tint. Colors always dry a little bit darker too. Now, I am going to make my regular tint. So you're gonna have a light tint and you're gonna have a regular tint. So for the regular tint, I'm just gonna take a little bit of the red. Now, one of the, it's really a rule of color mixing, is you always want to start with the lightest color, okay? Start with the lightest color, and then you mix the darker color into it, or the more, saturated color, the more intense color into it. Okay, so I'm thinking maybe that is going to be my... Okay, phone's a little distracting. Anyway, I'm back. I'm thinking this is about going to be my tone. Now, what happened was I got a little bit of black on my palette knife, so I'm going to quickly clean that so I don't get that black mixed in with my... I don't want to get the black mixed in there with my... Uh, tint. Because if I get the black mixed in with the tint, then all of a sudden I'm going to have a tone. I don't want to have a tone. All right. Now, 
Now that I have, this is going to be my regular tint. I want the value of my tint to be different than my light tint. And it is, and I'm happy with it. So now I'm going to consult with this. I'm going to see which shape my tint goes in, which is that shape right there. And so that's that shape right there. So you can see why it's a nice thing to put that tape down because you don't have to really worry about that edge. All right, let me get this edge in here. Can you see how when I'm up, uh, oops, after I add the, uh, after I add the white, you see how much more opaque the paint is? Um, so white, the addition of white is always gonna make the paint more opaque. All right, there we go. And I can always fix that edge later. I'm just flattening this whole thing out a little bit. I'll fix that red edge later. Now I'm gonna make some tones. Okay, so a tone is the hue, which is the pure color, plus black and white, which is gray. All right, so here I go. I'm going to start with the light tone. I'm going to take some white. I'm going to add a little tiny touch of black to that, just a little bit, always starting with the lighter color, mixing the darker one in there. Mix that together. I want a really, really, really pale gray. That looks great. That looks great. <laughs> Yeah, you know you would be, maybe you're laughing like at home. If you're in my class, you'd be like, ha that's so funny. That Carla, she's like just so funny. All right, I'm adding a little pink in there because I thought that that was like a really nice light pale gray. going to add a little pink to it. I want to make sure that it's, now I want to make sure that this light tone is different enough from my light tint. And it is. It's like a little bit duller. Maybe I want to add just a little bit more black. Maybe I want to add a little bit more red. Let's see what we come up with that. So, okay. I'm going to pick up where I left off and I'm going to get ready to mix the tone. Here we go. All right. So for the tone, it's the same as the light tone, but I'm going to add more of the hue. I'm going to add a little more, more black. Let's see what I get. I think a little more black than that. So. Okay. And again, when you're working on your first section, you're really deciding the value that your light tint, your tint, your light tone, your tone are going to be throughout the entire mandala. And that's very important. Now, comparing that, I think I could go a little bit darker with that. So I'm going a little darker by adding some more of the hue, more red. I also want to add a little bit more of the black too. All right, let's see how that looks. So what I'm doing is I'm comparing it. Oh, that looks good. I'm comparing it to the um, the light tone because I want it. I want the value to look different. I don't want it to look same as the. Uh, as a lighter tone. All right, and again, I'm gonna consult with this, figure out where my light, I mean, where my tone goes. And it's a small section, right up there. Okay, so, oh, that looks good. So I'm gonna put that tone right in there. Really paying attention to that curve, trying to get the edge as smooth as possible. Now I need to get in here and work on the corner, so I am going to move that around. So in order to get into the corner, I could use a small pointy brush, but I really like the Filbert brush for curves. It does pretty much everything that I want it to do, and it really can get in and work in, get some really good clean corners too. Okay, there it is. That is the tone. All right, the last thing we have to do is the shade. Okay, that's... Now with the shades, you don't want to make the shades so dark that you, um, that you can't see the color, okay? So what I'm doing now is I'm cleaning off my palette knife. I'm cleaning off my brush. I want to get all the white off of it. Clean off the brush a little bit. All right. So I'm now going to take my hue that I'm working with, the red. I'm going to put it right over here. And I'm going to add some black to it. 
no white. So I have to keep that separate from any color mixture that has white. All right, so that's getting pretty dark. And I don't know if I want it that dark, but I want it pretty dark. Uh, it's kind of a nice dark red. Let's see how that goes. I think that's fine. And compare it to the regular hue, you can see it's a lot different than that. So I'm going to add the shade in right now. So as I add that shade in there, I'm just putting some down there. I think I got my uh, brush got a little bit of uh, a little bit of white on it, so I'm going to clean it off. I dropped my towel. Hey, everybody. <laughs> so I'm going to get that. All right. So in here, I'm going to put the shade right in there. Like that. So you can see, probably you can see, that the shade because it doesn't have any white, it's a little bit more transparent and it may need a couple coats. You see how the paint goes on a little bit streaky? So I'm going to put that here. A little bit more goes in there. And what I'm doing when I'm playing around with the paint on the brush is I'm making sure I have the right amount of paint on the brush. So that's why I do that. So that's going in here. I'm going to fix that edge. Just like that. Pull this around there. And finally, finish that up. And I do move the paper around so I'm able to get the edges easier without kind of cramping my hand or whatever. Okay, I do want to give this a second coat. Maybe I'll go back after it dries. One thing you want to do is um, you want to make sure that if you are giving it a second coat, you want to make sure that it's, it's dry or it's really wet, but not somewhere in between. So you don't want your paint to be drying because if it's drying and if you go back and give it another coat, when it's drying, when, when acrylic paint dries, it forms a skin on top. So the top surface of the acrylic paint dries first, and then the bottom dries later. And sometimes you might have experienced this if you're trying to give it another coat, and the uh, paint is still wet, then that can be a real problem because the top surface of the skin of the paint that is already dried will peel up, and then it, you get kind of like a a blister kind of effect. Okay, now I know I wanted to go back and fix that edge of the red, so right now that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just fix that edge of the red right in here and maybe give that red another coat so it's nice and flat. Okay, that's much better. Really want that curve to be nice and smooth in there. Alright, I think I'm satisfied with that. So I may just go back and work with the red, just like that. Okay, we're good. That's one section. I will be back with the next video showing you how to do a uh, tertiary color.